ahead and follow. So this one has 16 domes? Right, so okay. we, we introduced a virtualization platform, the 495, right. uh, late 2008, that came with two Flex 10 NICs, 16 DIMMs, but we lost the function of hot plug hardware. Right, because they, they, they were moved to internal. Right, they solid, solid state. state. Yeah. It was a boot from somewhere, Blake. Right, right. Um, in the, so what we've done with our G7 is give the memory footprint that now matches the cores. Yeah, right. It's a nice, nice balanced subsystem, but we retain hot plug hard drives. One hard drive is actually deceptive. As this comes out, this comes down, I get my mirrored, it's a mirrored one here. Very so they're cool. all hot plug. Slide of hand, I love that. I, I, perfect for Vegas, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, these are, you know, spinning as we're servicing potentially the, the mirror that's tucked so, away. So when you pull this out, this is still running because oh, yeah. it's connected. Yeah, okay. it's still powered and connected. Okay. Uh, absolutely no issue servicing those, those drives. So you you honestly get the best of both worlds now. You get the huge memory footprint and you get your hot plug drives. And so you have the CPUs located underneath. We do. We do. That's that, that, that's a very unique architecture. I, I did not realize that. You know, do you expect a future um, half height sockets to half height blades to kind of follow this this design because this is a you know there's no more drive heat is going to affect the processors or vice versa you know some of the arguments that you hear yeah <laughs> So frankly, we've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Our thermal imaging guys, right. and, and our thermal team is phenomenal. Um, it all depends on the, the processor package, what the wattages are. The AMDs are typically lower wattage, so it lends itself to more of, a, more of this kind of uh, architecture where you're able to get that many dams and, and the hard drives. Um, given the G7 Intel, so don't necessarily have this type of layout. Uh, I'm not quite sure if the thermal guys were able to get that format to work. So show me some of the, the features of the 685 since we've got it here. If you don't mind, not at all. Six eighty five. Um, great thing about this is it's a four way and still a full height package. So, so 32 DIMM sockets, so we get a significant memory footprint for the number of cores that we're, we're throwing it at workloads now. Now these are how many cores? Uh, so the, the AMDs are um, 6 or 12, okay. depending on which right, which you go with. Uh, 32 DIMM slots, so we give it a half a terabyte of RAM, whatever. Uh, but again, balanced subsystems, so four embedded CNX, or their Flex 10 NICs, or their they're flex fabric mix, so you can do whatever you'd like with them. Now, where are they on the board? So you, you, you they're going to be hidden by heat sinks, okay. frankly. Yeah. Um, ILO 3, which is which is always a big thing. Everything G7 is going to have ILO 3. Right. What is, is this a, a RAID adapter? It is, it is a RAID adapter. Smart array controllers. Uh, be able, able to do multiple smart array controllers, battery back write caches, flashback write caches. And we reduce the number of IO modules, right? Instead of and then if if an aggregate 40 gigabit of IO isn't enough, of course we can populate mezzanine slots to do any other fabric connectivity that we need. Now notice the USB internal connection here. Is there still an SD connection? An SD card. I believe it's a micro SD now, so it's it's much smaller uh, than it is. Is it? Oh, is it way in there? Okay. Here, I can spin it if, if you're at all interested. But um, well, the only reason I bring it up is because we had conversations um, about using SD for ESXi and, right. and well, so, their so conversations they're, 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 versus using USB. Um, so I was just curious so, if, if, if so, so you got one HP continued to use it's, it. It's still embedded. We, we have we have so both options there's, available. There's 10 gigs. Okay. Uh, yeah, two, two, 10 gig so what's channels. the maximum memory capacity uh, currently for the 685? 32 DIMMs. Uh, it's is it 16? Yeah, 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 16 gig DIMM. Okay. Yeah. So it because there's, you know, uh, 
Reach half on the slot. There's and price wise, it's amazing what the two, memory two, market's two, doing two, now that two, now that they're two, back two, manufacturing dims. So mm -hmm. uh, it's really driving down the cost of those larger uh, larger dims. So you know, by the end of the year, it's going to be interesting yeah. what the price what the price will be. So uh, I'm going to put you on camera Fair here. Enough. Um, tell me a little bit about the ILO three because the ILO three is is one of those things that I, I think is going to be powerful, but. Um, perhaps not enough people understand the value of, of what it's going to add to the G7 lines. Yeah. So ILO has always been a standard for industry standard servers and embedded in blades as well. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the ILO 3 significantly updates the, uh, the processing capability of that management interface uh, from a user day-to-day uh, -day operational perspective. Mm -hmm. The remote console is significantly different in terms of its speed and reactivity. You might as well consider it a uh, almost a remote desktop mm -hmm. connection sort of experience. Uh, virtual media is incredibly fast. Uh, in my lab, I actually set things up so I do an ILO 2 versus an ILO 3 demo, mount from the same remote media, and do, let's say, an, uh, an ESX installation. And watching that that media, uh, I, I, the marketing hype is true. The 8x performance is it really that much faster? It is. It is significantly faster. Just side by side, you go, wow. Now, is that just software thing? You know, where the programmers redid the code or, or is there no, some no, secret it, sauce behind it, that the asic actually changed as well okay yeah okay yeah. It, uh, that's why it's ilo 3 versus ilo 2 right we're just a firmware enabled thing right we could retroactive but where we did change the asic okay so users couldn't take an ilo 2 and and upgrade it it, it is the design of the chipset that's it it enabling a lot of the performance it is. increase and all as well. Of these can, can coexist within the, within the same infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's that's the important part. Is that it's not going to change my chassis. It's not going to change any of that. So if I have empty slots available, I can get a new G7, put it right next to a G1, mm -hmm. G5, G6. Now, is it adding any additional? Um, features so like you're managing the system and you've got some G6s some G5s you hit the G7 blade is it gonna pop open new features that yeah. I think we've surfaced some things that haven't really been well known mm -hmm. uh, I like to call it the DVR functionality uh -huh. you know where uh, if I want to watch and rewatch a crash nobody's ever actually at a console when the system crashes right so you go what the heck happened you have to do four through logs sometimes the visual of what happened is important Right. So to be able to record those, uh, share a console with people worldwide, anybody with access to mm -hmm. it can can come in. You can collaborate uh, over the same same virtual media. We've made that a little bit more prominent. We've that's available in two dot or ILO two now. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's probably one of the lesser known features. Gotcha. And in ILO three, that's more of a prominent uh, uh, functionality. Uh, it's, yeah. Okay. Well, great. Well, thanks for your time. I appreciate it.